The Alfie Wattam Podcast. So, um, quite topical, but you're you're leaving the cloud. What's what, what's the story there, mate? What's happening? Yes. So we have run both in the cloud and on our own hardware for a really long time. I think we adopted S3 all the way back in 2010 or 12 or 10 plus years ago. So okay. that was the first uh, foot into the cloud. And then about five years ago, we went in deeper. And then when Hey, we went all in. Hey launched as an entirely cloud only operation when we went live in 2020. Mm -hmm. And then things started to go a little sour. Okay. And the reason they went a little sour was because I started seeing the damn bills. Yeah, yeah. And they were expensive. outrageous. Um, and they kept getting more and more outrageous. And I kept having this thought in my head that, you know what? This is just a temporary transition. There's all this cool stuff happening in hardware right now. We are going to be beneficiaries of Moore's law and cloud pricing is going to come down. What happened? Price uh, cloud, uh, cloud pricing did not come down, right? Yeah. They've stayed high. And all the ones who are getting whatever the sweet deals on clouds are the Netflixes of the world and wherever are using these clouds in, in, in a way with mega usage that just wasn't us, right? Mm. We're a mid-sized SaaS company. Um, and the bills did, just didn't make sense. So that was the one part of it. And then the other part of it was, that didn't make any sense was it was no easier. I bought into the narrative that the cloud was going to make it easier to run your applications. Mm -hmm. You were going to need fewer operations staff. The configuration was going to be easier. The monitoring was going to be easier. And now we've tried hard with very good people for five plus years to realize some savings in terms of productivity. And we've seen just about bupkis squat, nothing diddly do. Those two things together, you just go like, this doesn't make sense anymore. Mm. All the while we've been all in with Hey on the cloud, we kept running Basecamp on our own hardware. So we kept having one foot in the camp of, do you know what? What does it cost to run your own stuff? What complications are there in running your own stuff? And and I just, I was sold the cloud dream. I bought the cloud dream. I bought the idea. Um, I bought the metaphor that like, oh, we shouldn't all be making our own power. Why are you running your own power plant? Are you in the power plant business? <laughs> no, just buy your electricity from the plant, right? And I went like, yeah, yeah, we're not in the infrastructure business. Why are we running our own hardware? That was a very, very clever sales tactic. I really got to just clap, clap, clap. Whoever came up with that metaphor, sure. um, it, that's a billion dollar campaign or maybe even a trillion dollar campaign, but it just wasn't true. It was not true at our scale. Um, we tried very hard for many years with great people. We could not make it add up. So we finally sort of opened our eyes, saw that the emperor had no clothes in our situation and went, do you know what? Let's get out. No mm. more. No mas. Time to leave. And, um, and, <laughs> Of course, once we made that sort of decision, which was multiple factors, right? Like it was cost, it was the lack of productivity gains. It was this unnerving sense that when US East One, which is the most popular AWS region, goes down, seemingly yep. like a third of the internet is offline. And you just go like, wait a minute, wasn't the internet designed to be this decentralized wonder where everyone have their own computers and we're not interconnected in a way where if one provider goes down, then everyone goes with them. And it's just like, I don't want that future for the internet. I do not want the internet to be owned by five hyperscalers. Mm. And I'm not going to contribute to that. I, I owe my entire career, my fortune, my everything in terms of work to the internet. I need to do to the internet as, as I wish it do unto me. Yeah. And for us, that meant getting out, working with smaller providers, owning our own stuff and, um, and here we are, we have now on a hyper accelerated path to get out because this is kind of like this thing. We have this switch, right? Like when the switch turns on and the number that is sitting in my head right now is we are spending $38,000 per week Whoa. on the cloud on stuff we don't need to. Yeah, We just placed a mammoth order with Dell to mm -hmm. replace a bunch of stuff. That's going to come home. That's already paid for. We swiped the card mm -hmm. yeah. um, a couple of days ago. Like all sunk costs right now, what I'm just looking at, like that clock is ticking. 
$38,000 a week. The faster we get out of the cloud, the faster that $38,000 a week goes to zero. Yeah. I'm it'll in a be, hurry. It'll be interesting to see if other companies follow suit um, because when when it only takes one or two dominoes to fall for these kind of trends to-, to Oh, they already have. Thing. So this Absolutely. is the beauty of it. Yeah. Tons of people are doing yeah. this already, but they're doing it very quietly. Yes. Because part of the problem here is you have to first accept in part that you made a mistake. We made a mistake. Or yeah. mistake is even the wrong word. We bet on trends that we thought were going to go in a certain direction and they didn't. Mm. Now, it's not that different from all these tech companies that perhaps overhired during the pandemic because they saw demand all of a sudden sure. spiking and then things return to trend line and they go like, oh, oops. We thought this was a, a decade worth leap in mm. terms of uh, demand and so forth. And it just wasn't. I thought that the cloud was going to keep getting cheaper and it wasn't going to add up to uh, have your own hardware. Oh, okay. That trend line did not materialize. We're, 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 we're a public about it. Like I don't mind admitting to a bad bet. Mm. Um, I don't think that makes me less of a person. Lots of other people perhaps see things a little differently, specifically if they have a boss and sure. whatever. There's some things there, right? But the stories I've heard, there's so many companies doing this. There's so many companies doing this and they're just not talking about it. Um, and I think this is actually why the post that I made went so bananas viral. Yeah, like literally yeah. millions of people have read the post that I've written on this topic is because there were a ton of people who already knew what was in those posts. Mm -hmm. They had already done the math. They had already reached exactly the same conclusions, but no one wanted to stand up and say, look, the emperor has no clothes. You say the emperor has no clothes. I can't help but imagine a Dali generated image of Andy Jassy uh, walking around <laughs> naked. But um, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I should nuance that just a slight bit, right? Sure. I don't think that the cloud is is terrible for all businesses of all kind. I think the cloud is actually wonderful yeah. for a whole host of things. Um, I think you have to be very careful about how you use the cloud, especially as a startup. Now, mm. as a startup, should you be buying mammoth orders of Dell equipment off the gate? No, you should not. Just like you shouldn't sign a 10-year lease. Sure. Your whole operation might be out of business in 18 months. You should absolutely take advantage of this is a speculative venture. How can I minimize my capital expenditures and so on and so forth, right? Cloud, wonderful for that. Now, the danger is that you jump on cloud on that premise, which is a good premise, and then you start using all the proprietary shit. Mm -hmm. And by the time you validated your idea and you're like, oh, this is an ongoing concern. I might actually be able to plan for a five-year amortization scheme. You go like, shit, I cannot get out. This is Hotel California. There's <laughs> only an entrance. There's no exit. That's uh, unfortunate. And there are quite a few startups who are in that predicament right now. And where that really gets my goat going is when that group cohort of startups go like, shit, our costs are out of control. We're not going to be able to raise money at the valuations we were, whatever, six months ago. What do we do? Oh, we got to fire a bunch of people. And I go like, no, no, you don't. Cut your cloud costs first. Do not fire a bunch of people who now go into a terrible job market because you're sending all your money to AWS. Mm. That is just not a fair or nice or good or prudent way of running a business, in my opinion. Yeah. So anyway, the cloud has its purpose. If you are a spiky business, like Amazon, does the cloud make sense for Amazon? It makes huge sense for Amazon. They have these enormous spikes around Black Friday and Christmas shopping. And then like nothing, comparably speaking, happens in like March. You should absolutely set up in such a way that you can use your side price. You can use all this unused capacity the rest of the year, rent it out to someone who will buy it. Wonderful uh, setup. It's a wonderful setup for anyone who needs like huge spikes. Mm. SaaS companies? Mm, not so much. The vast majority of SaaS companies are boring as hell, which is why they're good investments sure. because subscription businesses are incredibly predictable. Our business is so incredibly predictable that at one point we predicted like how much storage did we need like 18 months into the future. <laughs> and we hit the mark with like an error of margin of a half percent or something bananas. Um, when that's your situation, when you have a, a scalable, predictable business, uh, it's a complete, why are you paying to rent? Now, mm. this is really also what gets me, right? Is that in every other way of business and life, people intuitively understand it is more expensive to rent than it is to own. Of course. Advantages to renting, like there's more flexibility to renting, 
but it's more expensive. Mm. But it seems like we have to have that like first principles argument when it comes to the cloud. The cloud is renting other people's computers. That's yeah. what it is. Hey, thanks for watching this YouTube video. If you want to see more like this, please remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.